Okay, as we complete 3-1 today, I really feel as I look at the problems that I'm going to ask you to do, that the majority of it is checking just to make sure you're understanding and can do the work in a slightly different context. Um, when I look at example four, it talks about constraints. And to me, that's just a vocabulary term that when I explain what it means, you guys are going to be like, oh, that totally makes sense. I want you to look at the problem on the pro bottom of page 91 in your book where it's titled identify constraints on the domain. So let's look at this problem here. The diagram shows shipping charges as a function of the weight of several online orders. Based on the situation, what constraints, if any, are on the domain of the function? So let's take a look at what the, the domain is. What are our x values here? What's the title? Weight of orders. And what is our, our y value or our output? As we've talked about a lot of times, if there's money involved, it always depends on something else. I'm saying always, I should probably say almost always. There's probably some situation I can't think of. But in this case, how much you pay depends on how much the package weighs. What's a constraint here? Is there going to be a negative weight? Is there going to be a zero weight? We had constraints yesterday when we looked at this problem here. This was the lowest value on the domain, and this was the highest value on the domain. Are we ever going to have a negative one or negative two in the x values with this problem? There were negatives in the y values, correct? But we would never go below negative two because that was the lowest part. That means that this had constraints that did not go beyond these lines that we drew outside of our circle, correct? So let's go back to today's problem and I want you to think about this. How would we show, for example, for the domain? X is going to be greater than how many ounces? It's going to be greater than zero. They're not going to pay for a package that weighs zero. There's going to be some weight to it. It might be 0.1 ounce. Yeah, is that a question? Okay. Why am I not saying greater than or equal to? They're not going to be sending something that weighs zero. There's going to be some weight to it, right? It might be, like I said, in the decimals, but there's going to be some weight to it. Look at the try it. Margaret has a monthly closed budget of $50. This is one of those, oh my gosh, this is why I don't like going and writing math problems. I've done it for the state before. It's kind of a pain. Because every time we try to think of a real world problem, it, I mean, okay, can somebody have a monthly closed budget of $50? Yes. She maps the amount of money she spends each month. Can you guys see her mapping, like making one of those maps out of how much dollars she spends? And No. But let's think about what constraints are there on her domain. Her domain is a maximum of what? $50. So for our try it, let's write the domain. And it's going to look similar to the ones that we wrote yesterday for our circle. Her maximum is $50. What's her minimum per month? Could she decide she's not going to spend any money this month because she wants to save for next month? Is it probable? No. Is it possible? Yes. So her minimum is zero. This is the domain, so what variable goes in the middle? Okay, she's going to spend less than $50. Could she spend equal to $50? Yes. Could she max out her budget and spend exactly up to and including all of her $50? Yes. What if she doesn't spend any? Equal. It's going to be less than or...
Does that make sense as far as a constraint? She's not going to spend negative five dollars. She's going to either spend nothing or some amount up to and including her 50. Um, isn't it supposed to be greater than zero or equal to? Well, let's think about this. Here's my x. Here's the zero on the right side. Remember we talked about order matters with inequalities. Remember all that? They're flip-flop. Her x is going to be less than or equal to. I think you were right and I flipped it. So this should be the other way around. This is why I should use pencil. Thank you, Liam. Mm -hmm. No, wait a second. I was right. You're making me rethink things. Stop it. It can't be less than because she's not going to spend less than zero dollars. She's going to spend more than or equal to zero. Either one dollar, two dollar, three dollars, or she's going to spend zero. Oh, like X is weird. Yeah. See, I, really I trusted you. I should have stuck with my own thinking here, and now I've done it again oh, wrong because I flipped it. And I'm recording this, so everybody who's going to watch this is going to be like, what are you doing? Okay, remember we have to flip this when we're putting it back into this. So right now it's greater than or equal to, so it's going to become less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 50. Okay, so again, a constraint is a limit that's being put on it. And that's why I really like the visual of our circle, because there was definitely a limit that we could visually see here. In the word problems, you just have to think about what makes sense. And it has been a little while since we've used inequalities. So write it out. Put it in the order that makes sense and think logically, does this make sense? When I rewrote this as a suggestion, I was like, no, wait, we're not going to spend less than 50 or less than zero because less than zero would be in the negatives. And she's not spending negative dollars, right? She's not going to owe anybody money because she can't spend more than what she has. And if we go into the negatives, that means she owes somebody, okay? So with that, here are the problems that I want you guys to do. They are gonna be due whenever I see you next, Pat, when the snowmageddon is over. Bless you. Please turn the page to page 92, 93. We are starting at number four and going through number seven. Most people in second period reported in the about 11 minutes they had, they got to about number seven. Then we're gonna skip over to 13 to 20, oops, I didn't mean a comma, 13 to 23. So four through seven, 13 to 23. These are going to be due. I want to be able to check and make sure that we have a clear understanding before we move on. Clear understanding does not mean that there are zero mistakes. There might be a few little errors, like flipped signs, but we can correct that, right? So with that, what questions do we have? 